every last speck of dust is whisked away. Highly polished and immaculately restored, 120 top-class vintage cars are being presented at the most prestigious competition in Europe. The Concorso d'Eleganza at the Villa d'Este on Lake Como. Hundreds of classic car enthusiasts and an expert jury to present the awards to the best cars in the nine different vehicle classes. There are genuine legends in almost every category. The Porsche 904 GTS. The Ferrari 250 GTO. For the 110th anniversary of Rolls-Royce, a 1908 Silver Ghost. Or the Jaguar XK120. Each looking to win in their own particular category. But there's one early casualty. A 1922 Hispaniola Suiza refuses to start. Its owner, Alexander Schaufler, sits in despair behind the wheel. The Vienna businessman has done everything to guarantee a perfect performance for the jury, even to the ladies in period costume sitting at the rear. Only a few minutes ago, everything was fine. The car runs sensationally, it's unbelievably light, almost 700 kilos lighter than the Phantom 1 and backed up by outstanding technology. The car will easily do 140, 150 kilometers per hour. And now that happens. Schaufler's mechanic gets to work. There seems to be air in the system somehow preventing the flow of petrol. We spend months preparing for this event and then the car doesn't work at the very moment we're supposed to start up and drive out. It's always worked up to now. We did a 200 km trial run in Austria. As more and more cars start, Alexander Schaufler desperately tries to get help on his mobile phone. Most people here at the start know exactly how the man from Vienna feels at this moment. That's a shame, very sad. It's just bad luck, but it's happened to me too. It's part and parcel of this business, you've just got to live with it. Bernhard Knöchlein has entered his BMW 328 in the C category, the 1930s. His classic 1938 model is a particular rarity. BMW only made two of these cars, and the other is in the Deutsches Museum. In the early 70s, my father found and bought it in France, where it had gone after the war. Then, a year or two ago, by pure chance, I managed to find the first French registration document, the original from 1947. Two hours earlier, the judges also inspect the BMW, as they do with all the other participants. They give marks for the original condition, any restoration work, and the quality of the interior trim and finishings. At 2.30 p.m., it's time for the lawyer from Nuremberg and his BMW to roll. Since 1929, the most elegant vehicles have been driving up to this historical building at the Concorso d'Eleganza. There are a number of prizes, and only a few are awarded by the jury at the podium directly. The BMW will later receive a special award from FIVA, but today the most coveted prize is the Copa d'Oro, for the public's choice. And here, Bernhard Knöchlein's BMW has to give way to an Italian. This sensational Alfa Romeo 6C 1750 Grand Sport. The 1937 Roadster makes the most of home advantage, and the largely Italian crowd votes it the 2014 winner. And then there's another surprise provided by Mini, the concept car Superleggera. This is intended to show the direction Mini could be heading in future, a stylish Roadster driven by electric power. BMW chief designer Adrian van Hoydonk explains the idea behind the concept car. For this car's interior design, we really have allowed ourselves to be inspired by the original Mini, and there wasn't really much in there apart from a steering wheel and a speedometer dial. And if you look at the design here, it's very sparse, and the instrument dial is now a touchscreen display. Of course, that's the technology of today and tomorrow. 
And how is Alexander Schaufler coping with the starting problems of his 1922 Hispaniola Suiza? Well, they've finally been solved, and the man from Vienna is belatedly allowed onto the Concorso. And is successful. He is declared the winner of the Trofeo Röckel for the best overall appearance of car and driver. So for him, there's a happy end after all.